Hello everyone, Ember Power here, and welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a look at some custom theme decks that I made for Scarlet and Violet. So basically, for those of you who joined during the Scarlet and Violet era, you may not be aware of there used to be these things called theme decks, which were basically like these kind of terrible, but fun, you know, starter decks that Pokemon would release with every new set. They would come with roughly 20 Pokemon, 20 trainers, and 20 energy. So they were pretty consistent, to be honest, um, inconsistent rather, pretty inconsistent rather, but to be fair, they were meant to be like more of a starter introduction to the TCG. And so you weren't supposed to, I guess, buy more than one or something before, you know, you picked up a proper deck. But they were pretty popular on the online version of the game, Pokemon TCG Online, because you could actually purchase theme decks for 500 gold coins, which was an in-game currency that you could earn for free. So basically, once you got a theme deck, for the theme deck format, you weren't able to change your theme deck list at all. So basically what you could do is for any theme deck, you could just select the one you wanted, you could purchase it, and then you could take it onto the theme deck ladder. So that was really nice. It meant there was this nice self-contained format that all had like roughly the same power level. There was like two or three theme decks that were more powerful than others, I guess, like Soaring Storm and Relentless Flames come to mind. But other than that, it was just a very good casual experience, and it's something that I think TCG Live is sorely lacking. So I wanted to do some, basically just do some custom theme decks for Scarlet and Violet. And in first up, we've got Quaxalava, which is just the Iron Samba deck, which is going to be a water metal type deck. I've done one theme deck for each of the starters. I'll leave timestamps in the description and comment section. So Quaxalava has the ability Energy Carnival, so we can accelerate an energy card from our hand to one of our Pokemon, which is a really strong ability, and it's one of like the only Pokemon that really has a strong ability within the theme deck scene, so very nice to see. Also pairing it up with the Reverum, which is like one of the strongest like draw cards, I would say, in the theme as is, but you know, Rumbling Engine still requires you to discard an energy card from your hand in order to use the ability, so it's not like you can do this every single turn potentially if you don't have the right energy to discard but still pretty strong effect and so this deck is basically just focused around some strong water type pokemon there is some metal type pokemon like this bronzong that were added last minute it's a bit blurry see if it wants to load gravitational drop does 40 damage and then 40 more for each colors in your opponent's active retreat cost so not the worst attack in the world and there's even a 2-2 line of dondozo tatsuguri so Dondozo, pretty strong Pokemon, but because you only have two Tatsuguri, it's not going to be doing a whole ton of damage, so it's still pretty well restrained. As for the trainers, it's nothing too crazy. I just went for a selection of pretty mediocre to bad trainers, to be honest. There's some Pokeballs in here. To be honest, compared to like most other theme decks, the trainer selection in this deck is pretty bad. I did opt to include some stadiums because I just kind of miss it, kind of miss it when... Theme decks stopped including stadiums. I think they're a good choice. Beach Corp, definitely a very powerful option, but it also means you can play supporters like this Falconer, for example, which is a draw four if you have a stadium in play. So just some nice options. Also just playing very low powered supporters. This one isn't playing like any Pokemon recovery like Miriam or Super Rod, which I might change, might add a Miriam into this later for the uh, list that I'll leave in the description for each of these, but yeah. There for the trainers, and then for the energy, 9 basic metal energy, 10 basic water energy, and then 1 copy of jet energy. Because once again, I kind of wish that all theme decks would include 1 or 2 copies of special energy, just because I feel they add a lot of variety without being super, super broken. So jet energy is just a really nice choice in my opinion, because it means you can power stuff up, up, stuff up on the bench with Quack's Lava, and then attach a jet energy and move that Pokemon to the active. So that's going to be Iron Samba or Iron Samba, I should say. And then we can look at Masked Thunder, which is the Grass Lightning deck. So based around this Meow Squadra, I don't know why TCG Live does this. It like mixes up where everything should be placed. It's really annoying. But we do have this Meow Squadra, which has a kind of annoying attack in the form of Trick Cape. It does 40 damage, and you may put an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. Super annoying disruptive. Also pairing it up with a stage 2 Pormot, which has the ability Electrogenesis. Once in your turn, you may search your deck for base Lightning G card, attach it to this Pokemon. And then Electropause does 230, which is basically just a massive 1 KO on anything in the format. But you do have to discard all energy from Pormot. 
There's also some other powerful Pokemon like Thunderous, which is can be really strong even though it does 90 to itself, as well as two copies of Maridon because I always thought the, these these single prize like Maridon and Crydons would make perfect flagship Pokemon for theme decks, but of course they did discontinue theme decks, so sadly it didn't get a chance to shine. So this card is pretty terrible and standard, but I think theme deck could be a good place for this card to shine. Then there's also one copy of Shuckle, just because I really like Shuckle, to be honest. There's no other reason why this isn't here. One copy of Bellabolt, and then like one copy of Tadbulb, so it's just a very thin line, but not the worst option in the world. And then one copy of Rotom. We didn't talk about Squawkabilly in the first list, actually, but I did want to include some interesting basics, and this Rotom kind of fit the bill. So overall, I would say this deck is a bit stronger than the Quaxlava deck, even though that one has a rev room. I just think the Pokemon section here is a bit more versatile. Sure enough, the Belly Bolt isn't doing masses damage, but because it's doing 70 and then 30 snipe, could be pretty decent. So I definitely like the Pokemon section a bit more in Masked Thunder. As for the trainers, it's a little bit different. There is a Miriam in this one. There's even like a Crushing Hammer and an XP share to go along with the Arvin. It's two copies of Jock, two copies of Energy Search, because different energy is more important in this build than it was in the last one. Then we also have stuff like Letter of Encouragement, even a copy of Palpad, and a copy of Bravery Charm, and then one copy of Artisan, which can be a very powerful stadium, but it does help both players a lot, so that's something worth bearing in mind within the theme deck format. As for energy, though, we have eight copies of Grass Energy, ten copies of Lightning Energy, and then one copy of Jet Energy again. So that's it for Masked Thunder. Then we can go on to deck number three, which is going to be Song of Fury, which is probably my favorite deck, to be honest, out of all of these, which features a Squawkabilly again, but then it also features a 1-1 line of Camerupt. Trying to find Camerupt, there he is. 1-1 line of Camerupt, which does have the Eruption attack, which can be very, very strong. Also running two copies of Torkoal, and I guess the main Pokemon of his deck, which I've talked about first, is either this Crydon, I guess, which can be pretty solid, can do a whopping 190, but you have to discard three energy, or two copies of this Skeledurge, which I guess is like the main attacker of the deck. Passionate Singing, which can be great for accelerating energy, and then Blazing Shout does 190. So the whole idea is that you use Passionate Singing to accelerate energy, and then kind of build up either something like Crydon or Torkoal. So yeah, pretty solid options overall. Also playing a very thin line of this Annihilate, which is very, very strong with Rage Fist, which is why it's only one copy in the deck. But yeah, very strong option and worth playing around with. Also just added a Cloth because I really like Cloth and I wanted Cloth to be in the deck, but yeah. Bit of a theme deck Pokemon there in the form of Cloth, but yeah, I like Cloth a lot, okay? I'm allowed to put them in. But as for the trainers, there's, again, nothing too wild. There's, like, one copy of Gita, which I guess is a bit more out there, I guess, because you don't always see energy acceleration, even though there is actually a theme deck that gave you two copies of Welder, which I still think is wild. But, yeah, Gita, definitely a solid card overall. There's also a Brassius, which you don't always see, which is nice. I think that's the, yeah, that's the hollow artwork, so that would be annoying to translate, but... There is some other stuff in here that's worth noting. Two copies of Artisan and two copies of Nesbol. <coughs> Pardon me. And then as for the energy, it is simply 10 basic for energy, 9 basic fighting, and then one copy of Luminous rather than Jet Energy. Just to, you know, spice it up a bit. And having a different energy, I think, is a bit more important in this deck compared to the other ones because both Pokemon are attacking in equal hand. So both fire and fighting. So yeah, that's Song of Fury. And then we can get to the last deck, which was initially a bit of a silly deck. It was going to have like 25 energy and only about 10 trainers or something, but I did change it up quite a bit. And that is going to be Trials of Paldea, which is based on like the early game of Scarlet Violet and, you know, trainers like Nimona as well as the Academy. So that's kind of like what this deck is about. It also has some Titan Pokemon like Bombardier and Earthworm, as well as Mastiff, who Arvin has. So... That's basically what this deck is. It's kind of just a mixture of people's teams and Pokemon that you would encounter early in the game. So it's a right mixture. There is playing, there is like this Pormot line, which is pretty solid. Electric Fist can two shot most things while also doing a 60 snipe, which is a very strong. So that's a very strong card overall. There's also stuff like this Kilowattrel, which is just from the early game. There's also two unique Flamigos. This one does 60 and then 60 snipe, but you can find it with the other Flamigo, which I really like. So both strong options. There are some weird choices in here, like the Orthworm, which requires you to have 
three or more meta energy attached to it to gain plus 100 HP. And then shoot through does 130 snipe. So again, continuing with the snipe theme. And then we have Bombardier over here with Delivery Pocket, which can be quite nice. And Dark Edge is also not terrible. So some nice options overall, as well as the Mastiff we mentioned earlier. And then, of course, the Dedunce Bars. As for the trainers for this list, I kind of went a bit more consistent than maybe I should have gone. I kind of like said, uh, if I'm going to make this deck a bit weird, I might as well make the trainers a bit better. But I probably overdid it. I think I should have added stuff like potions and stuff instead of like more consistency. But I ended up going with stuff like Great Ball as well as high counts of Energy Search and Ultra Ball because the energy counts in this deck are pretty weird. We're playing 5 Metal, 7 Dark, 6 Lightning, 1 Luminous, and 1 Therapeutic Energy, which basically says this Pokemon can't be asleep, confused, or paralyzed, which can be quite useful. So that's Trials of Paldea. It's basically the only theme theme deck because I kind of miss it when theme decks had a very specific narrow theme. And this one is supposed to be about the early game featuring Scarlet Violet, basically. But yeah, it's been our power. Let me know what you think of these team decks down below. I'm going to do some more for 151. I've already got the deck list sorted out for them. Just have to craft the cards. So yeah, it's been Amber Power. And yeah, thank you for watching.